Hi everyone, this is Eric at Retro Handheld Guides, and today I'll be looking at the PSP performance of the RG35XXH on the stock operating system. I was actually quite surprised at the performance of the PSP on this handheld, as it is a little bit of a lower end chip. However, I got quite a few games to uh, run at full speed, either without frame skip or just with a frame skip of one, which makes them quite playable. Uh, as well, at the end of the guide, I'll also be showing you a couple of hacks and uh, tips and tricks that I've gotten to get some of those harder to run games to play at an acceptable level, uh, depending on how well you are willing to compromise uh, if you really want to play some of these extra games. Now I've broken down the games into a number of different statuses, uh, again with uh, playable being those that are able to run at full speed with no frame skip. Uh, mostly playable with those games that are able to run at full speed with a uh, frame skip of one. Uh, those that are barely playable are those games that uh, either can't run at full speed or uh, have uh, considerable dips with them uh, as we're playing even with the hacks or frame skipping. And then those games that are not playable at all, uh, I've also shown a couple of those in there as well. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this uh, gameplay footage. Um, and as always, uh, leave any comments uh, that you have in the comments below. All right, so the first thing I want to show you today is just the setup that I have for PPSSPP. Uh, to access those settings, just click the function key at the top of the device, and then use your D-pad to scroll over to the settings. From here under graphics, you can see that it's an OpenGL backend. Uh, rendering resolution is 1x PSP. Uh, full screen is on, VSync is off. I turned off frame skipping by default and auto frame skip uh, just so that we can have the smoothest experience. And then on a game by game basis, you may have to turn this on to set it to one. Uh, you just click on frame skip and then set it to one and make sure you have your auto frame skip on so it's not always frame skipping. Down here under speed hacks, I have the uh, skip buffer effects off, GP Rebex is on, lazy textures is on, and I changed the uh, Bezier curve quality down to low. Under the performance hacks, uh, hardware transformation and software skinning are on, and uh, I've also turned off upscaling. Down here at the bottom, it's also important to make sure your texture filtering is uh, set to off. This will give you a little bit of extra boost in terms of speed performance. And then at the very bottom, I've turned on frame counters and speed, uh, show speed. Uh, this one, next little setting that I have uh, for my setup is um, a personal preference. You guys don't have to turn this on if you don't want to. Um, it's under the display layout. I specifically set the display layout to have an aspect ratio of 0.85. Uh, the default is one, uh, and that gives you the 16 by nine ratio with the black bars on the top and bottom. I like the 0.85 because it does tend to fill out the screen a little bit more without sacrificing too much of the quality. Um, so it does stretch it a little bit, but it doesn't look overly stretched. So that's the way I like to play it. All right, with those settings, uh, let's get to the games.
Some games can be made more playable by changing the emulated clock speed. As you can see here, I'm playing X-Men Origins Wolverine, uh, which normally runs at 60 frames per second. But by changing the emulated clock speed, I can have it automatically dynamically scale to uh, frames per second without using any frame skip. So let me show you how to do that here. First, click on the function key to open up your menu, and then click on the game settings. From there, you want to scroll down to System. And in the System Settings, if you scroll down to Change Emulated Clock Speed, uh, change this from Auto to uh, Scales of uh, 111. So 111, 222, or 333 uh, megahertz uh, tend to work well. So on this one, as an example, I've changed the scale to 111 megahertz. And it seems to allow for this game to play uh, quite well, actually, uh, where it normally wouldn't even work well with frame skip. So I've used that on a couple of the next couple of games to show you how you can go to make a game from unplayable to, in my opinion, fairly playable uh, without using a frame skip and have a pretty stable connection. Here we actually have God of War Chains of Olympus and I've actually combined two different hacks here to try and get this to run at a pretty stable 20 frames per second which isn't the best, it does normally run at 60 frames per second but I'd argue that this is pretty playable 
Uh, certainly most reviewers will put on the frame skip where in my settings you can see I have actually not enabled frame skip at all. What I've done here is I've actually enabled two features. One is the cheats. There is a cheat uh, that allows you to automatically have the system run at 30 frames per second. And from there, I've also enabled a second hack through the system menu by changing the uh, clock speed to 222. This will actually allow me to play the game at about 20 frames per second, which is better than the 30 frames per second with a frame skip of one, which would normally play it at 15 frames per second. This is obviously going to be different for every uh, person who's playing, but I'd argue that this is actually not a bad experience if you do want God of War to play on this particular handheld. Thank <laughs> you. 